Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And we're back in the world of digital electronics now for part two of a three-part series looking at using latches as counters. Now, if you've not seen the first part, I'd recommend that um, as we're going to make some assumptions that you have watched it as we work our way through this video. And I've done quite a few videos on digital electronics now, so look out for a, a playlist which will have all the um, videos that I've done on digital in there so you can reference them and there is a sort of a, a progression that goes along from simple to, to slightly more complex circuits worth a look. Let's start then by going straight to the bench for a little bit of revision on binary counters. Quick bit of practical revision then, here is the CD4 Zero, 020 binary counter, 14 bit binary counter. I'm inputting a 2 hertz signal here and counting occurs on the falling edge, so it's when the LED goes out. And you can see the binary lines here where a lit LED is 1 um, and extinguish LED is 0. And we're slowly but surely counting up, and obviously that, that takes a while at 2 hertz, but we are slowly ticking along there. So if I just up the frequency there to 500 hertz that should at least show you that counting is occurring and eventually the most significant bit will get to lit here and once all the others are lit it very quickly loops back to zero you should see that occurring any moment um, it's quite quick. there we go and so we've we've reset we've rolled over if you like and we're back to zero and counting is still occurring and the chip is more than capable of uh, doing that apparently up to 3.5 megahertz so let's just um Let's just see if that's true. So I'm now going to input 3.5 megahertz, and as you can see, it just looks like it's lit up. So let's just um, just got the mini wear scope here, um, and I'll just pop the the probe onto the most significant bit, which is that orange line there. And as you can see, we've got a it's saying 427 hertz. So that's rolling over. 427 times a second so the chip is indeed capable of uh, reaching its design frequency and I would imagine that yeah it's tried to struggle at four and a half megs but um, at four megahertz yeah it's still doing it no problem at all so that's the bit of binary revision um, now there are plenty of um, examples of binary and if you want to look at uh, Ben Eater's very excellent channel where he builds an 8-bit computer he displays the contents of his registers um, quite often in, in 8 or 16-bit binary numbers so it's um, it's a common system from a, a computing point of view but it's less friendly for us human beings who probably prefer numbers so let's see what's about that we can maybe convert that into uh, something that's uh, a little bit more easily understandable for us uh, for us analog machines to decode bcd into some decimal numbers we're going to make use of another 4000 series chip that's the cd4511 which is a bcd to decimal converter and driver and this chip uh, is capable of driving the seven numerical segments of a, a common cathode seven segment display if you're not familiar with that very simple internal circuit all the cathodes are connected together and then the seven uh, parts of the number are the seven uh, LEDs on the left and the eighth LED is the decimal point we're not going to make use of the decimal point here but that's the general arrangement uh, inside the chip we've got um, four BCD lines coming into a latch uh, then there's some decoder circuitry and finally a uh, driver which uh, is to output to the seven segment display that looks a bit complicated here's the internal circuit diagram so we've got eight latches there uh, decoding the uh, four lines coming in from the BCD and we've got the center section which consists of a number of three and four input NOR gates there's also a couple of NAND gates there as well uh, three NAND gates actually and then there's some more uh, NOR gates which eventually on the right hand side uh, drive uh, NOR gates which drive inverters and those are the outputs for the seven segment display so uh, okay yeah there's a lot of gates there but uh, the 
uh, conversion logic is, uh, is relatively straightforward. On the breadboard then, uh, that looks uh, something like that, and we've got the uh, 4511 taking center stage, and I'm using a two-digit segment, seven-segment display. I'm just using the uh, right-hand segment, uh, and most of the wiring there, which is the current limiting resistors, and then uh, the wiring to enable me to get the uh, seven outputs from the 4511 to the actual display itself uh, and then sort of just below the center in the middle I've got four lines black two whites and a blue which uh, are the four BCD inputs that we're going to have a look at so without further ado let's go take a look at that on the bench here's the 4511 then um, set up on the breadboard as I've just shown you and I've got four jumper wires coming across here to four push button switches and currently all the inputs are tied low through these 1k resistors they're just 1k pull downs and pressing a push button will take that input high so we should be able to see what's going on um, with the outputs of the of the BCD driver chip so let's take uh, line A high and we get one if I take line B high we get two so if I take line C high, we get 4. That's because 3 would be 1100. So 1, 1. There you get 3. 4, 5, 6, uh, sorry. Yeah, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And because we now try and display 10, uh, it can't display that so we get a blank display so the important thing to note there is you obviously can um, produce more if you like numbers on 4-bit binary coded decimal than you can in nine digits of decimal so that's the 4511 uh, working away so uh, next step would be to hook that up instead of being hooked to push button switches hook it up to the output of the uh, uh, 4020 uh, counter now just have a glance at this image here that image there's the internal circuitry of the 4020 and if you look you can see that um, although we do get uh, output from the first latch we don't get it from the from the next three until we get to Q4 so if we tried to feed in one and four onwards uh, we wouldn't actually get uh, the numbers we're expecting. So what we need is an entirely different chip, which in this case is the 4040, very similar, uh, but the 4040 does allow you access to those those first latches, so it gives you access to one, two, three, etc. So I'm just going to reconnect that, and then I'll uh, come back. Okay, so now I've removed the jumpers across, and I've simply got A, B, C, and D connected to Q1, two three and four on the 4040 uh, chip here. The 4020 is just sitting there um, minding its own business. So the 4040, I've not bothered at, uh, connecting up any other lines because we can only display nine digits. But what I have done is I've just included a, a resistor pack here so we can run uh, LEDs as well as drive the chip. So you can see what's going on from a binary and a decimal point of view. So I've got uh, function generator attached to the clock input there I've got it set to one Hertz so let's just um, let's just put a pulse in and I'm going to switch that off immediately it's not that easy to do but straight away we can see we've got zero 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 one which is indeed equal to one if I can manage to put another one pulse in there we go so we've now got 0010 which is two next pulse should hopefully light up that one yeah, I'll stop it again. So there you go. You can see the chip is indeed decoding um, the BCD and presenting it as a decimal number. I'll let it run, and eventually when all four lights light up, uh, we get to the point there now where it's displaying a number above nine, and eventually all four lights will light up and we'll roll over. There we go, back on to counting up from zero to, to nine again. And if I just up the frequency to 5 Hertz you can see she'll whiz along there quite happily and 
it should theoretically do that far faster than uh, than we're able to see. There you go. Yeah, and when you get in the the blank, that's because we've gone above nine in in BCD. So that there you go. That's taking the output of um of a counter, which essentially is those latches again, which is where we came in with this sort of series of videos, and we've now taken that um, binary output from those latches, fed it into the uh, 4511 decoder chip and we're able to, to make a display which uh, displays the numbers in a, a slightly more uh, friendly format for us to see. So it's nice to see some of these old uh, uh, 4000 series chips uh, in the corner and doing this kind of thing. Okay, we've taken our binary output from our 4020. We've decoded it using the 4511 and produced an output that makes a little bit more sense than just a row of LEDs. So hopefully you've seen the, the practical use of, uh, of latches there in counting. Now I'm acutely aware these days that um, you can say, well, why not just use an Arduino? And indeed, uh, Arduino, Raspberry Pi microcontrollers, yeah, they're really good at that, perfectly good at that, and probably better now. Um, in terms of not using discrete, discrete circuitry but when it comes down to it uh, all these microcontrollers essentially make use of countless numbers of latches and gates so I think there is some value in, in understanding some of the building blocks that are going on inside those more complex components hope that's made some sense um, and you've learnt something from it. I'd encourage you to uh, get some of these components, although some of them are now 30, 40 years old in terms of their, their production dates. Uh, they're still available, um, they're not expensive, and there's quite a lot to be learnt. I've learnt quite a few bits along this uh, digital electronics road, and as I often say, um, for me, lockdown electronics is about um, sharing what I've learnt with you. I didn't necessarily know what I know now at the start of these videos, so it's uh, uh, quite handy there to have done that. Um, please have a look at the links uh, in the uh, description, and also if you're interested in um, any of the sales links, anything that you um, buy from those links, if you use the code, if there is one, uh, that helps the channel. Anything we get goes straight back into the channel. Please, if you don't already, subscribe and also click the like button. Both of those things cost nothing, but they really help the channel to grow. Thanks very much for watching. See you on the next video.